Good morning. Good morning and welcome to another Thursday here on This Morning. It's been five years since he and Kat said goodbye to the square, but they're back. And this morning we're joined by Shane Ritchie, who plays Alfie Moon. Hello. And he's also, of course, in 71 degrees north and we've been thawing him out this morning. Still so cold. in a sleeping bag. Do you want ice in that drink? Oh, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> and leave my Twitter account You're alone, Twittering all live way. on air. <laughs> Don't touch. Oh, no. Don't touch. If anything is said, it's not Holly. Not for me. <laughs> and a true veteran of the Aussie soap scene, it's, uh, well, this is great. He's about to take up his role in, in the West End. Yeah. <laughs> do you really? Yeah, we do. Do you really? Yeah, we get in trouble for it. Huh? Well, Shane Richards just said, he said, are you Twittering live on the telly? So I said, yeah, just occasionally. He said, well, yeah, I have my mobile phone underneath me in the Queen Bee. <laughs> oh, great. Now, <laughs> there you told everybody. <laughs> That's very good. Back in 2005, we said uh, goodbye to EastEnders' Cat and Alfie Moon as they left Albert Square to start a new life together. Five years on, and with Cat heavily pregnant, they're both back, and it seems trouble is not too far behind them. I've called the police! Whoa, 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 whoa. no need, sir. We're already here. Yeah, CID. Yeah, you are nicked. Oi! Wait! No! Ah! Goodness! No. Come here! Okay. Alfie. Oh, oh, I love it. And a nation Beautiful. went, yes! Yeah, you think They're so? Back. And my wife went, oh, great, he's out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure you're asked this a lot, but but we know, obviously, that there was a dodgy timeshare and a bit of a scam in Spain. Um, yeah. But but we were led to believe, when you when you left, that you were going to go around America in a Capri. Did that ever happen? We got as far as Heathrow. Did that you? was the idea. No, I'll tell you what, because uh, me and Jesse talk about it a lot, and... And it wasn't till you leave a show like EastEnders that people kind of latch on to what you said and they try and run with it and their imagination runs wild. Mm. And Tony Jordan, who created uh, the Slaters and the Moons, and of course he's written Hustle and Ashes to Ashes, he had this great idea that, you know, there was, what, there was talk at one time of a spin-off with Cat and Alfie uh, at the BBC and there was the idea of being muted that Cat and Alfie uh, make it to as far as Vegas and this whole scam went on and we were and we were thinking oh maybe there might be a script in this and it might be a spin-off a movie it could have been a movie <laughs> <couldn't> <laughs> <I>? <laughs> and sadly that didn't Magic. happen um but no you you find out as uh, the story goes on and on in these standards where they've actually been and we have been in spain mm. and alfie's been up to some dodgy deals and it all comes back to bite him on his backside later on yeah well this is kind of what we're seeing right now because they've come back with this stash of cash haven't they <laughs> yeah um, hidden in a toy dog. Hidden, yeah. Well, yeah, there's ten thousand yeah. pounds of it hidden in the toy dog, and obviously, the, what we're going to see tonight is that you and Kat finally start talking, and she thinks you're here to come back and take the money, doesn't she? She's a bit unsure yeah. about what's going on, and then the toy dog then gets taken to the market to be sold with the other toy dogs, and there's yeah. ten grand gone missing. And Heather finds the money inside the toy dog. Oh, I don't need to watch tonight, then, do we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and because uh, you know we did this like three months ago, and yeah. so much has happened. Since. Uh, since. So, yeah, so the story... Well, you put... OK, so just... Oh, so go on, and you tell you me. You put the money... <laughs> yeah. On the, so then you get, the, you get the money back from Heather, you give her a little bung, and then she gives you the majority of it back. <laughs> right. And then you decide to bet the money on a horse. That's right. But we won't we say won't any more say. than that. We won't say. We don't know whether you oh. won any money or... Well, we do actually know whether you won or lost, but we're not going to say okay, that. Okay, because, yeah, this it. is all leading up to... Because we know uh, Kat's pregnant yes. uh, with a baby. But she's saying it's not yours. She's saying that? Is it mine? We don't know if it's mine. Well, she's already said that you're dead, and we know full well you're not, because you've dead. just turned up. And she said and that she, you were dead. She calls dead. me a Jaffa, being seedless. Uh, <laughs> and we find out maybe I am, or Alfie is or isn't. But this is the whole build-up now to Kat uh, making a nest for the baby. Will we stay in the square? Will we go to Where the will Vic? that nest be located? There will we go. the nest be in the Queen Bee? We don't we oh, want oh, We've got a bit of a lovely. clip here. Let's okay. uh, let's have a look at this. What did you do? Did you wake up and realize it? I get it. Oh, finally. It's about the money. That's why you've come crawling back. What? Oh, no. Oh, Kat. that tripe about not caring who the kid's dad is. I can't believe I nearly fell for it again. Well, you can have the money. Good, cuz it's mine. For me and Bertie Bump, and after what you've put me through, I deserve every penny. Oh, Bertie Bump. Oh, Bertie Bump. Bertie Bump. <laughs> Love that. So, uh, so, yes, so we've got to, um, got to assume that w whatever money there is, there may be enough left over. The, 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 the Queen Vic is now free, burnt out shell, so you're going to have to rebuild it if you yeah. were to go in there. Um, so, um, so are you, uh, are you comfortable in the Queen Vic at all? Has it been rebuilt? Is it yours? Yes, I'm going to let you now. Cat uh, and Alfie 
uh, are in the Queen Vic and it looks very much like it did when we left in 2005. Albeit it's very different uh, and of course you know they're rebuilding sets because we're going HD. Mm. Yes. It's got to be all proper So now. we go makeup at 9.30, Botox at 9.45. <laughs> uh, it was like, oh, right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and so we end up in the Queen Vic, uh, but uh, Cat and Alfie have really put their mark on it. Mm. And I, it looks very much like their place. See, when you obviously get asked to come back to something like EastEnders, mm. I imagine that's a decision you don't take lightly. And you must have been thinking, there's got to be a storyline there. That's got, there's got to be a reason for us to bring back those characters. Yeah. So was that kind of... A carrot on a stick? It was, it was spoke about uh, last year. My manager got a phone call about, you know, would I be interested in coming back? But I was tied up doing other stuff because if, if I was going to come back, I'd want to come back to something substantial the story. So me and Jesse spoke, we should have the same phone call. So then we had the meeting last year uh, and then Brian Kirkwood, of course, who's a new exec producer there now, mm. uh, came and sat down with us and told us about this storyline he's got, which is going to be an ongoing story for the best part of a year, maybe two years. Mm. And we kind of went, Wow. Well, and, it, and, and, I, and I can honestly say, um, after being involved in these sense for a long time, it's going to be the biggest soap story, I think, in probably the history of soaps. I'm That's putting my neck on the line. Is and it is a big thing to say. say. And we've recently just had a, another meeting with the exec producer, and me and Jesse are almost foaming at the mouth, knowing what's going to happen. Soon. And I, and I do believe it could be one of the biggest. Quick, grab it, Johnny. I was about to say, we need to it's ply you with alcohol no, quickly. It really well, is going to be that, massive. Going into, if, if, if the Queen Vic is yours, the new yeah. landlord, landlady, I mean, that's not a short term thing. I mean, you're not just going to go in there, have it for a year, and then move on again. No. So you'll be there for a little while. Yeah, and we're talking about, uh, you know, a long term. Uh, Good. Good. You know, and, and, it, and it's a great place to be at the moment. It's very different to when it was when I was last there. Mm. Uh, they were pleased to see you, though, weren't they? Oh, very much so. Very much so. And they've kind of embraced the whole Cat and Alfie thing. Yeah, as great. the rest of the Who was nation. it that said uh, that you, Minty was Cliff. It Minty? Cliff Paris said that Minty said, I'm glad you're back because I'm fed up with being the only sexy man here. <laughs> <laughs> See, Scott's off dancing, I'm left on my own now, yeah. not I? Yeah. <laughs> so, that's EastEnders. Tonight, yeah. 7.30, BBC One, absolutely not to be missed. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, on Tuesdays at 9 on ITV One, we've got 71 degrees north, which I, for one, am loving. Now, the reason I'm loving it Go is on. because when you were all out, because we know that it's done now, Yeah. Um, when you were all out there filming it, the word was coming back to ITV Towers next door oh my god this is really really hard this is serious stuff so when it's in the newspapers saying oh they've got a support team they've got they've got no. cam there they're all being beautifully treated once oh. they there's nothing like that it couldn't be further from the truth like when i got the phone call last year about doing it i was kind of reluctant to get involved with doing you know like your celebrity jungles and things uh, and I spoke to Christy about it, and I said, well, you know, this sounds like it's only going to be three, four weeks away. I get out doing the school runs, and you know, I might make a couple of quid, and then we'll come back. And, and I kind of knew I was going to be doing Alfie then, so I was cool about getting away, maybe having a bit of an adventure. So we all met up at the airport, and, and word went round who was doing it. We all met at the airport, and when we flew into Norway. And that's literally, as we were getting there, the Admarines were leaving, saying, what are you guys doing now? Oh, we're doing a reality show about tra and they were just leaving. They were saying, no, you, this is stupid. You guys should not be out here. Oh. So, and we had no training, uh, no training. And I totally, a nice hand on my heart, underestimated how tough it was going to were you, be. Like genuinely fearing for your life. Like Holly, I, t I swear to you, there was something recently said in the paper that, oh, obviously behind the cameras, they had catering trucks and warm hotels. That wasn't the case. And when you see us fighting for survival, I've got, yeah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm slightly exaggerating by the safe survival. You're fighting just to have a warm bed and a shower and to be able to, to, to run your hands under hot water. Yeah. Well, so much so that and in no way at all do we condone theft. <laughs> so uh, that you were uh, were actually on the way to a task, yeah. had stopped for petrol or something in the in the coach that was taking you, and you jumped off the bus and you actually stole chocolate bars out of the service station because you hadn't got any money. Right, well, I can hear the police arriving right now. She just said, <laughs> yeah. So between tasks, you get on this coach, and of course you don't. You're, all you you got you've literally got the clothes you're wearing because you've stayed overnight and you've got your rucksack and a toothbrush. And so on the way to our next challenge could be a four or five hour drive and you're going further towards the Arctic Circle so it's getting colder okay. and colder. So of course the driver pulls over for petrol. I, I remember clearly there was me, Gavin Henson, Joe Absom, Marcus, Susie, and we've gone into this garage and we saw they were serving hot dogs. 
And of course, we've got no money. So I said to Gavin, Gavin, just go up and get someone's attention. Of course, good looking guy, he's up there giving it all the help. And I'm just eating everything. We're like, oh, quick, 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 oh,